provide you with the 1% knowledge to help you reach your full potential. Learn what it takes to rise above the 99% and become a one percenter. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. This is your host, Sam Bakhtiar, and I have my very good, long, long time <laughs> friend, Jason Capital, in the house, man. I'm so excited to have you, Jason. Dude, I'm very excited to be at your really beautiful home, man. This place is marvelous. Bro, I'm excited to come check your place out in Dorado Beach. Okay. Like we were talking about <laughs> in the off camera, man. Like, you know, Dorado Beach, when I took my wife there, like she's spoiled because I can't take her anywhere else after that. Because it's one of the most beautiful places. Now you live there. So I know you gave me an open invitation. I'm going to take you up on it. Yep. Yep. Open. So Jason, we haven't seen each other. Like we just recently started seeing each other again, you know, at events. And, you know, we speak at the same events and stuff like that. But I haven't seen you in many years, man. Last time I saw you, you were just like 22, 23. Yeah. You know, and we're out there. We're partying. We're trying to make money. We're doing all kinds of dumb shit. A lot of dumb but shit. A yeah. lot of dumb shit back then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden, I see you more, I see you on Instagram, and I see that you were just out there killing it. You're helping people get out of rat race. You're helping people, you know, achieve the American dream. What have you been up to? Because I haven't really talked to you in the last, you know, 10 years. Since yeah, at, at, at a deeper level, you know, what have you been doing? Yeah, so when we first met, I had my basketball business. I remember right? that. And that's where it started. I started that from my dorm room, and I, you know, I was making good money, 20, 20, 21 years old. I was making 20, $25,000 a month in that little business. And, you know, of course, at that age, you think you're the richest man yeah, in the world, yeah, right? Yeah. And I, I moved to California in San Diego. I lived downtown. And while I was out there, early 20s, I discovered this thing called marijuana. I never tried it before. I was always like, that's bad. You shouldn't do that. And then it became legal. And I was like, maybe I should, you know, maybe it's not that bad. <laughs> Wiz Khalifa, Kid Cudi, I don't know. And uh, I tried it liked it and it turned out I have a really addictive personality and I started dude I would sun up till sundown I was smoking weed all day long and uh, it was like the more I smoked the less money I made until after about a couple years I had no money left my business was turning out no money and I had a choice which was either pay Uncle Sam or pay my rent I chose Uncle Sam I was kicked out of my apartment in in, uh, San Diego and I moved back home to my mom's basement Um, and where's home uh, it's West Bloomfield Michigan it's a suburb outside of Detroit so you went from a beautiful San Diego, but living in a very nice area, mm-hmm. nice place, lost it all, and you went back to fucking Detroit. Yeah, it How's was. That? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Detroit sucks. I'm sorry. I mean, like, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I know you know. You, so, you know what it's yeah. like. It's cold, cold, and it's, gloomy, dark. It's, it's exactly right. I, it, I, dude, I always had this optimistic kind of point of view. I don't know. It was maybe it, it's because. I really believe that there's a certain power, and I know you, you agree with this too, in taking complete responsibility over everything that happens in your life, good, bad, even if it wasn't your yeah. responsibility. And I've always done that, at least for as long as I can remember. So business fails, I'm not worried because I made that shit happen. And because I made that shit happen, I can make something else happen now too. So I, never, I was never concerned. I was just like, yeah, I fucking smoke way too much weed, my bad. Uh, but I was back in the basement, and I was like, well, what did I do wrong that caused this to happen so when I build my next business, that doesn't happen again? One was obviously the extracurricular activities. <laughs> yeah, the weed, to stay away from that. And two was I stopped Kaizening. And this is a term I say a lot. And I know you know the term, yes. right? The constant and never-ending improvement. Let's get 1% right better each day. Yes. And I stopped doing that with basketball because I, I stopped playing basketball. I stopped training players. I was just running the online business. So I'm on the 20th floor. My guys are on the ground floor. I can't relate to them anymore. You can't relate to your prospect. You can't sell them anymore because you don't understand their pain points, right? So that was another big thing. So the other thing I had going on when I was in San Diego is I had a side hustle where I was dating coaching, right? And I teach guys just like Hitch how to attract better women, become more confident, better relationships. I remember that, man. I remember talking to you. Like you had like... You had like a copy and paste course, right? You know, like, like, like when you were co- teaching people, if she says this, put this. Oh, if, if that yeah. says that, you put that, right? Oh, I yeah. remember. Yeah, it's like, oh my God, I remember. I, had a, I was obsessed with it <laughs> uh, because, dude, I was a virgin until I was 20 years old. All my friends are talking to girls. I didn't kiss a girl. I had a girlfriend, nothing until I was 20. I was a senior in college. So uh, that was a big pain point for me, something I wanted to not just good at. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to master this stuff. And once I got good at it, it was like, all right, well, I can monetize this and I can help guys with it. So that was going to be my next business for mom's basement. So I started the dating business and in less than nine months, I'm a millionaire uh, cash. And I, I was two years after that, I was named the number one dating coach in the world for men. And so it was like I got all accolades and stuff. And I, 
the same thing started happening again that I did the first time, which was when the, the rewards came in, I started fucking celebrating and partying too much. And I just told you off camera, right? In, in 2015, I went to Vegas 25 times, basically every other weekend. And I'm, I'm building the business and it's growing. And you weren't going to Vegas, you know, you know, playing penny slots. You were getting the penthouses and you were getting the VIP tables. I know how you roll, brother. You, yeah, yeah. You, know the, you know when you're talking to the promoters and they're like, yeah, I got the day bed or the, the cabana and they're like, it's only a 6.5 came in. And you're like, fucking $6,500 for a party. Are you Okay, put me down, I'm in. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I did that a lot. Uh, yeah, it was bad. Like I go to Vegas and I post that on social and nine promoters hit me up. Yo, dude, your outlet. And I'm like, this is, you know, you, environment is destiny. And if I'm hanging yeah, out with these you, people. This they is, know you're a big spender. You know you're going to go to Vegas, so all the promoters they, want to, yeah. They see dollar signs. Yeah, yeah for sure. totally. So uh, around 2016, dating business was good, but I'm partying too much. I feel lost. I feel like I've lost my sense of purpose. I never want to feel that way. And I couldn't stop myself from the partying and all the extracurricular stuff, and I needed a kick in the ass. And I heard about this guy named Dan Pena, uh, who is the $50 billion man, and you've seen his video. He's a fucking ass kicker. And I paid him 25 grand and I went to Scotland and I went to his castle seminar for eight days and he just yelled at all of us for eight days straight and it was exactly what I needed. I came back to California, I wrote my book, Higher Status, I switched from dating to personal development at the time and I had an, a, a renewed sense of, of purpose. So tell, uh, me, tell, tell me a little bit about Dan, you know, Dan, yeah. you know, Dan, because you said that's exactly what you needed. Yes. So tell me, what did he say, what did he do, that, what was the aha moment that you know, you're like, okay, you knew I think at that time, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, you ha your success thermostat, you, you, you had it at a certain level yep. where every time I heard you achieve a certain amount of success, you, you know, then you automatically went back, yep. you know, went back, right? Yep. So something he must have said, something he must did that all of a sudden, you know, it kind of reset your thermostat. Yes. What was it? Yes. Well, it was that and that was what I needed. I think. Like I thought I'm 26, 27, 28, I'm making $3 million a year, I work 15 hours a week, I am the greatest human being on the planet. And that's baloney, right? And I went and I knew if I go to his place and I see how he's living and his standards, it's gonna reset mine. Yo, Jason, you're, you're, you're nothing. Yeah, you're, you're, a, shit. you're a speck. <laughs> yes. You are a grain of sand on a beach. Yes. You're nothing, right? And, I went there and I got that and it reset my standard and he goes, you're not at the top, dude, you're fucking here and you got a lot of work to do. Isn't that funny, man? I mean, I mean, I remember, you know, when I first made 10 grand a month and I thought, I was like, oh my God, because I'm from Sharon, Pennsylvania. And Sharon, Pennsylvania, our first household income in Sharon, Pennsylvania is like $22,000 a year. So when I first made 10 grand a month, you couldn't tell me shit, I was the man. <laughs> I made 20 grand a month, oh, you, you know, it was- You're the mayor now. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and now when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, what an idiot. You know, I thought I was Puff Daddy, yeah. you know, when I was making 10, 20 grand a month. And now, you know, when I'm making a lot more, somebody else is looking at me and like, but really? Right. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah. it's, it's just a context. It's, it's just a standard. For me, and this is something I've, I've had to learn the hard way, is we repeat what we reward. Right? So. If, I make, if you're making 10 grand a month and then you start celebrating that, meaning rewarding you for making 10 grand a month, you, you're starting to train yourself not to go up, mm -hmm. but you go, your brain goes, okay, I make 10 grand, I get validation and dopamine and, and reward, this is good, let me just stay here, right? Someone like Warren Buffett, he didn't reward himself for making a million or 10 million or 100 million, he just kept reinvesting it because he's like, I haven't peaked yet, I need to keep reinvesting in myself and my business and my associations and keep this growing. So, I try not to reward even where I'm at now. I've, I've trained myself to, you know, the process is the reward and I don't need to do the partying and all this other stuff to reward myself. Let's just keep growing and keep mining this potential that's here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so Pena was, was huge for me. I love that, man. Yeah, man. So, so, so he had a pivoting role. So you came back, kind of re, you know, revamp everything. You didn't want to be a dating coach. You went to personal development. Yep. You know, what happens next? So, uh, so I come back and all my friends are like, damn, you changed. And I'm like, I know I changed, dude. Yeah. Like, uh, like, like was it like an overnight thing? You just decided, you're like, fuck it, I'm just done. Yep. Cold Love turkey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, knew, I knew the answer. I knew the answer. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to hear it from you. Yeah. Well, you know, because, because, because most, most high achievers, they don't need to get into it slowly. They don't need to wean off. They're either in or they're fucking out. Yeah. You know, once you're out, you're fucking out. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're like, you know what? I'm out. Yep. 
Yep. And it, to be perfectly honest, like I said, before Pena's, I knew what, like mentally I needed to do that. I couldn't get myself to do it, which is why as an achiever, I was like, all right, I can't do it myself. I'm going to get help. I'm going to go to Pena. He thinks I'm going there to learn how to make money. No, no, I'm going there to learn how to, what he would call turn the key, right? Either you just shut it the fuck down, like you just make the strong decision and you do it like, the, like the swift sword, right? Uh, so I come back and I'm done partying. I've changed a lot of my friends, a lot of my old friends. I don't talk to them anymore and, and that's fine. Um, and I started personal development and I still felt lost for a couple of years. It's like, I know the personal development thing. I love it, but I don't love teaching it. At the same time, I see market forces shifting and I, I spotted this opportunity where it's like, well, Jason, you are, you do have a talent for what we call high income skills, copy, closing, speaking, the ability to convert, to sell, to persuade. And by the way, I remember seeing one of your videos I was watching one of your videos and you said those are the top three yes. you know, income producing yes. skills that you need to learn. Yes. I remember that because I memorized it. Because I'm like, because <laughs> well, actually when, when, I, when I saw that video, Jason, I, was, I thought about it. I'm like, that is so fucking true. I never thought about it. People who get paid the most, they have one of those three skills, yes. if not all three. Yes, and the ones who get paid the most. Yes. They're, they're, right? Now, of course, I think it's always, because I know some people who, who listen to you they're beyond just being income producers, they're business owners, and that's different, right? But the person who just wants to get 10 or 20, 50, 100 grand a month, it's high income skills, copy, closing, speaking. Higher income skills might be the ability to delegate, to leverage strategy, you know, like clone yourself, that kind of thing. But for the people I work with, people who want to replace rat race life or laptop life or just scale their income so they can hit. They're solopreneurs. Yeah, solopreneurs, or they have a couple subcontractors, you know, a lot of people have that uh, high income skills, copy, closing, speaking. It's so crazy because I invested in your program. No, because I wanted to check it out. I want to check it out. I'm a student. You know, yeah. so, so when I saw, you know, your program, you know, you know, you have all the programs into one, one teachable thing. And I, and I saw it, I'm like, man, this is cool. And I bought it for my, for my crew. I'm like, hey, man, we can learn from Jason. I know this guy and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and then all of a sudden I'm getting hit up, you know, from a bunch of people. You know, I, I remember Danielle, who's my copywriter, you know, you know, she hits me up, hey, Sam, I'm a copywriter and I want to, you know, I want to, you know, can I come work for you? And I, and I, and I write copy and I'll, well, you know, send me a couple of samples. So she sent me a couple of samples, copies. I'm like, damn, she's pretty good. I'm like, well, how'd you learn? I'm like, I'm like, how'd you learn how to write copy? He goes, well, I'm certified by Jason Capital. I'm like, Jason? You know what I mean? <laughs> and, 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 and the uh, next thing you know, I get, you know, hit up with, with Zach. Zach that, you know, we, we yeah. talked about him before. You know, he, he, he's, a, he's an IG agent. You know, and all of a sudden he was like, oh yeah, you know, I learned from Jason. And like, not a day fucking goes by when your name is not brought up to me. You know, it's like lately it's been more and more and more. So you're doing something that's affecting a lot of people in a positive way. You, you're helping solopreneurs and entrepreneurs, you know, make more money and also helping business owners like me, you know, make more money because obviously they got the skills. I don't have the time. They bring their skills and, you know, exactly. it's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, match made in heaven. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so now I'm on this mission to create 100 millionaire students and it's through high income skills. And the thing that... Uh, you just, you said is that you can't go a day without hearing my name or, or whatever. Like that, and I want everyone to know this because I, I, this isn't me bragging at all. This is me, I want people to do the same, is the influencer game is humongous. The personal brand game is huge. You've done an amazing job growing your personal brand, Sam. Uh, is you, like in 2020, you need to be like oxygen. You need to be everywhere, mm-hmm. everywhere. People need to go, they can't, like, I don't want people to go anywhere without hearing my name or seeing me. I want them to be, I want them to feel like, dude, I can't fucking get away from this guy. He's annoying. I hate him. He's everywhere. Because I know for everyone who says that, there's going to be someone else who is Oh, absolutely. Enthusiastic look at Grant Cardone. Yeah. I mean, like, when, when, you, when you look at Grant, man, I mean, you know, he's every fucking where. He's in your face, everywhere. Like I said, some people hate him. Yep. Some people love him. But guess what? He's laughing to the back every single day. Yeah. And I don't have a private jet. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but here's the thing for all the people listening who are like, well, I'm not Grant. I'm not a salesman. I don't want to be aggressive. I don't want to be on my phone all day. That's fine. Right. Because for every Grant, there's another guy, do you know, Graham, Graham Stephan, you know, that is, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Graham is huge. His YouTube videos. I think they get over a hundred thousand views the very first day, like all of them, which is no one does that. Right. And Graham is the opposite of Grant Cardone. He's different philosophy. He's a different personality. He's not on social media constantly all the time flexing you know, his roles and his jet and all that stuff, right? And it's just a different take. So all the people who don't like Grant, they like Grant. Yeah. So no matter introvert, extrovert, it doesn't matter. There's a place for you if you're willing to put in the work. As long as you, you're going to have to be in front of people. 
Yeah, eventually, one way or another. And that's the thing, you have to be good in front of people. And what does that mean? High income skills, copy, closing, speaking, specifically yeah. Yeah. speaking, right? So I spoke a couple weeks ago in San Diego at Craig Valentine's event, right? The Perfect Life Retreat. Mm -hmm. Great event, amazing audience, and my whole talk, I spent a lot of time talking about how, gang, you have to understand, in 2020, video is 90% of the internet. It's already 85%, it's 90% in 2020. By 2020, it's basically the entire is, internet. Is that why your IG is all video? My Instagram? Yeah. For the most part. Also, just, just through our data and what we've seen is that video just does so much Yeah, better. yeah, I've yeah. noticed that myself. Yeah. You know, and your videos are off the chain on IG, man. I mean, you're, you're editing, you know, your people, whoever's editing your stuff and the creativity is just, it's just genius. Yeah, my boys, my boys go hard. Scotty and Dan and Henry, shout out to them. Uh, yeah, yeah they, they do amazing work, man. Um, that's why, so video, yeah, video is real important. And like, th that's my point is whether you're an IG agent, you're a copywriter, you're a solopreneur, you're, it doesn't matter what, like, if you're not on video in 2020 doing a good job at communicating your message, your competitor who might not provide the level of service you do will still outsell you because they're better at getting in front of the customers than yeah. you are, yeah. right? Like we, whether for, for better or for worse, we don't just judge people by the quality of their work or their service we judge their ability to just deliver the message. People who are communicators and charismatic, we just give them more value. We put a halo over their head and we assume yeah. they're happier, better, better, prettier, richer, they have better sex, that food tastes better for them. We just assume these things. And so, it, but it's a skill that people can work on. Most people go, Jason, I'm not a good speaker. I'm not good in camera. I, I wasn't either. You can go back to when I first met Sam, my videos, I kept them online because I want people to go watch them, my basketball videos. And you can see me and I suck. You can go back and you can go watch Gary V's first video on Wine Library he TV. He sucks too. He is awful. And it's the most inspiring thing because he's, he's one of the highest paid speakers in the world today. And you look back and you go, fuck, if he started there, I just, I could do this. Just put in the work. Do a video a day. Kaizen that shit. And pretty soon, like, you'll be good. And here's the thing, like, 2022 is coming no matter what. Yeah. And so when, that, when it comes, you're either gonna be good on camera and crushing it, or you're not, and you're kind of gonna be irrelevant in your marketplace. That is so true, man. I mean, you have to adapt. If you don't adapt, you perish. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and a lot of people just don't do that. Well, you know, a lot of times we hear people, I just don't do social media. I just not, it's not a social media person. Well, shit, man, I don't do a lot of shit, but I need to do what I need to do, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't, I don't get it. I'm just not a social media person. I'm not, you know, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do that. Well, you have no choice, because. To me, that's a resume. If I want to hire you, the first thing I'm going to go do, look at your Facebook, look at your Instagram, okay. see what kind of, you know, if, if you say who you are who you are, you know, you know, what, you know, what do you believe in? What do you, what do you post it? Yep. You know, that's so important. At this point now, when you're hiring, is it uh, positive and negative or neutral for you if someone graduated college? It has, has no relevance. You don't care? No relevance. No relevance. To me, if somebody graduated from college, you can, anybody can graduate from college. You know, I want to know what you do in the real world. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, for the, and, and you're talking to somebody who graduated from college, somebody who went and got a doctor degree, you know what I mean? And, and don't get me wrong, college taught me a lot of intangible stuff. But if you already have the discipline, if you already are, are have the right mindset, it doesn't matter. Yep. You know, I've had trainers that work for me, trainers who had, you know, a master's in kinesiology, that they were fucking horrible on the floor. <laughs> they were fucking horrible. They know what the, what the book said. They were fucking horrible. They also had trainers who had a weekend certification. No joke. I'm just the truth. Weekend certification. They went on a one weekend, fucking got certified as a trainer. They were a better trainer than the guy who had a master's in the because you know what? At the end of the day, is your people skills. It's yeah. how you carry yourself. It's how much you care for the client. Yeah. It's how much you're willing to go above and beyond for somebody, not just sitting back there and just say, oh man, I'm a master in kinesiology and okay, well, we got five more minutes, hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true, man. The, there's this huge thing I keep seeing over and over and I think it's gonna get more true as we go forward is that those who self-educate are the ones who prosper and those who rely on the book education just continue to stagnate. Because most people, they finish college and that's the last book they ever study whatever they studied in college. Whereas like, I, so I was having dinner last night with a couple marketers and one of them has 16 year old daughter and 13 year old son and both his kids are on YouTube for hours every single night. And like his son is, is quoting anthropolo anthropological studies and mm -hmm. he knows homo erectus and homo sapien and he's like dropping knowledge about and it's all self-education. It's not a book 
that was forced upon him that he had to memorize that he would get graded on. Yeah. It was, I'm interested in this subject, I'm gonna be led by my own internal desire, and I'm gonna immerse myself in this topic. And people who, that, like that's, those are the ones who succeed. Those trainers who crush it for you with no degree but a, an A certification they got on the weekend. Because they love They're probably reading T Nation or bodybuilding or DeFranco or Martin Rooney or whoever the, the sports, like Eric Cressy, like they're just, yeah. or the, they love that stuff, yeah. you know? God, Martin Rooney, Eric Cressy. God, I haven't heard those guys in a while. Right. I gotta, you just give me an idea to get them on a podcast. <laughs> those would be good guys. Yeah, yeah those man. are real cool guys, man. So you said your mission is to make how many millionaires? A hundred millionaires. A hundred millionaires. How many are you at right now? So we got nine millionaires right now. Nine I millionaires? I started five months ago. Five months ago? So, so 91 months. to go? I got nine. I got my and work cut out for me. So, so, so but by when? Three years is what I did. Three years. Say. Okay. Yep. So, so you have, okay, three years. So you have two and a half years to produce 91. Yep. I have no doubt you will hit that. I will do that. I have no, I have no doubt that you will hit that. Yeah. You know, what else you have? What do you, what do you have going on personally? You know, you know, what do you, you know, tell me what are you working on to better yourself? Yeah. You know, so, I, I watched one of your videos. I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Bro, you got your life optimized. Like, like I love, <laughs> dude, I love optimization. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy who prints out a schedule the day before. My clothes is laid out. I know exactly what time I'm getting up, what time I'm working out. You know, not. But one thing that I don't have done, right, which is one of my pet peeves, is fucking knowing which five vitamins I got to fucking take. Like, <laughs> that, that, that's like a four minute day. Because, you know, I got three of those vitamin boxes. And I have to take turmeric, CoQ10, fish oil, krill oil, you know, uh, reservatol, you know, so I got my whole, you know, like, like, like you do, yep. you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and every day it's like my pet peeve is like, fuck, I gotta, I gotta sort and put, you know, 10 different pills and, you know, eat them with, you know, whatever. And then I saw one of your videos that you had them like, you, you had an assistant, put them all in the bottle, mix it up for you, ready to go so you don't fucking think about it. I'm like, dude, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, genius. I was like loving that video, oh, man. So, so tell me about some of, the, some of the life hacks here, because I know you're big on that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, I think the most important asset in anyone, in any business is themselves. Uh, we have to take care of ourselves first. And not even take care to me is too low of a standard. I think optimize is a much better way to look at it. Uh, so I'm always hacking away at how can I optimize my life and myself. So some of the things I've been doing recently, um, I do transcendental meditation. Okay, tell, tell me, what, was, what, what the hell is that? Okay, well, here's- so I know what meditation is. Here's, here's the problem with it, and why most people, maybe even <laughs> you don't want to do it, is it's 20 minutes twice a day. So there goes 40 minutes of your day right there. Hey, if it's gonna help me, I'm, I'm willing to do it. Because the other, I know you, dude, you don't sleep much, I know that, uh, you're up early, I sleep more than you. But the other, let's say, 18 hours of the day that you're awake, you are infinitely more productive and focused and energized because of those two little 20 minute so sessions. So you know what, if you, if you give away 40 minutes, but right, you increase your productivity by a lot, then that means you gain time, Yeah. right? Yeah. So tell me, what, what, what does that mean? How, how, what is that? What, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? You can you sit down or you can lay on the ground, either way, you just find a comfortable position, you close your eyes, you're gonna breathe through your nose, and you have a mantra. And you silently in your head just repeat the mantra gently for 20 minutes and that's it and it, the, the way that they describe it is if you look on top of the ocean there's waves on top all day long and though that's your day those are your thoughts those are your emotions but underneath at the bottom of the ocean it's always a, there's a calm presence and stillness there and when we go into transcendental meditation it's like we go back to that calmness and that stillness and when you come back up it's i am it's like also i'll do it first thing in the morning uh, and then I'll do it usually around three or four in the afternoon. So like after we're here, when I drive back, it's the first thing I'm gonna do. And uh, in the past, let's say I do it, at, in the past four, 4.30, not a crash, but I wouldn't feel as good. You know, you're carrying all these yeah, conversations. Yeah. You just, you're not as focused. Yeah. Now I do the, the, the TM and then it's like, I have a brand new day. Focus. Yeah, until I go to bed. It's, it's unbelievable. So that's, that's a big one for me. And I recommend, so, you know, if someone just start with, start with one. You don't have to do two sessions a day. Start with one, just something. Um, other things that I do, I do yoga uh, every other day for the most part. So yoga has been really, really big in my life. Um, the, the protein shake thing is a, is a tiny one, but I know you like that one. So what I did is uh, th I actually got this at Dan Pena's event, man. Yeah. I was sitting there at dinner uh, at his castle, and I'm talking to this dude next to me. And he's telling me about his life hacks. And he goes, I have my assistant prepare my protein shakes. I'm like, wait, how? So, like, because you know, when you finish your workout, that's when you have your protein shake. Yeah. So I'm like, you have her waiting for you when you, f he's like, no, no, no. We take a mason jar and we'll take 30 of them. And she'll fill each mason jar with all the ingredients that go in the shake. So all I have to do, open the shake, put it in the blender, put it in the, whatever the liquid is, hit blend. 
Because you know, like I figured this out. I go, okay, well, I take, yeah. I got protein powder, I got collagen, I got probiotics, I got goji berries, I got cacao, I got reishi mushroom, I got cordyceps, I got all this stuff that goes in it. To open and close yeah, each one is, cool. yeah. is yeah. three to four yeah. minutes a shake, yeah. two shakes a day, eight minutes, that's an hour a week, four hours a month, that's 50 hours a year. Two, more than two days a year we spend making a protein shake. I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. So that, that's a, so I have my assistant prepare all my protein shakes, that's a big one. Um, and in terms of you ask me like what I'm studying right now, Dude, not to go back to like the school system and stuff, but like I am very, very interested in reading a lot about the shit they didn't teach us in school, like money yeah, tell me and finances. Tell uh, me about like it. so, on the on the way here, I was listening to this audio book on Warren Buffett, all the essays he's written for Berkshire Hathaway, and it's just it's unbelievable. And I'm listening to him talk about derivatives, right? And in my mind, at first, I was like. Is a derivative, <laughs> and if I ask ninety nine point nine percent of the population, they don't know what a derivative. They learned that like in third grade, but I don't even remember what it is. No, we didn't learn. They didn't teach that at mm-hmm. all. They, maybe they did in like ma- the derivative. What he's talking about is like so the way the way Robert Kiyosaki explains it is if you have an orange, that's an orange. If you make orange juice from the orange, the orange juice is a derivative. It comes right. from it, right? This is what caused a huge part of the crash in two thousand eight was derivatives, the mortgage backed securities and, and things like that, where people weren't betting or on like the actual loans and the mortgage, they were betting on like futures and they were betting on swaps and things that could happen 20 years from now or 100 years from now. They weren't, it wasn't real money, right? That, that was being moved around. So like, I'm talking about this now. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, right? Like I know it a little bit. I don't feel like I understand all the concepts perfectly, but this is a subject I want to learn because I don't want to work for my money for the rest of my life. I want my, I want my money to work for me and I want to do it at a high rate. And school didn't teach me this. College didn't teach me this. My dad, I love him. He didn't teach me this. I have to learn this on my own. So I'm studying the Warren Buffetts and these finance guys because I want to learn how this game actually works. Uh, and I want, I want to learn it also so I can help more people do it too. Because I got all these young guys and girls who are making money now. But dude, you know, you make, let's say you start making 10 grand a month, you think you're the shit. Yeah, we, we talked about this. This is what happened to me when I was in San Diego is you think you're the shit, you spend that money and then April 15 rolls around and you're like, wait, I owe this money in taxes. This is crazy because you don't know what to do with the income to avoid paying all those taxes. And so you end up becoming a slave to the government for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Is that one reason you you, uh, went to Puerto Rico? Fuck yeah. (laughs) On camera, Jason Cameron says, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's legal. You know, it's legal, it's ethical, it's moral, it's moral, excuse me. Um, What happened is when I was 25 years old, uh, I got the biggest tax bill of my life, right? Uh, I just put away, there's a certain number of liquid I wanted to put away, and it was just, just an ego number. I hit it. I'm really excited. It's like March. April 15 rolls around. You got to give it back. <laughs> I had to write a check. Been there, bro. Been I, did, there. I was 25. I had to write a check for $525,000 and just send it away. I'll never see that money again. I'd already paid, I don't know, 400 grand in quarterlies already, and I owed an extra 525 on top of it. It was just... It was rough, man. And I was like, I need to learn this tax thing. And so I got a good team around me and we set up an S Corp and a C Corp and a foundation. And we, we, like, we built some good stuff here and it worked for a little bit. But last year I got another tax bill and I was like, this is not working. And then my accountant said, here's your estimate next year, by the way. And I was like, no, no, I'm just, I work way too hard. There's just, I just, I refuse. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you don't want to pay taxes, but you, when you pay most of your, ta- most of your income to the government, I always say it's, um, it's, it's the business partner that never put in anything and gets most of the shares. Yep. You know, he didn't invest any, any money. Usually a business partner invests either money or time. Yep. None of that happened. Yep. <laughs> you know you're I mean? exactly right. Yeah. And, and you give them the money and where does it go? It's not spent wisely. Like if you look at the, the way the government spends money, if it was a business, it would be the worst run business in the yeah. history of commerce. So, like, I, I, I want to move to Puerto Rico, where it's a 4% tax overall, and with all the money I'm saving, let me do the good with it I want to do with that yeah. money, right? That, that 525 grand I sent to them, I, I'm, just based on the numbers, I'm pretty sure it was not put to good use to help anybody. If you had given me that 525 and I got to keep my money that I earned, now I can go and I can give it to the charities that I want, or I can do the extra work that I want. I can help people the way I want. So now that I'm in Puerto Rico, I have that mm-hmm. ability to, to, to do the charity work that I actually want to do yeah. instead of just, just throwing it away. What, what are you working on and any secret programs you're working on? Because every so often, man, you come from, you come up with some of the most genius <laughs> shit ever. I gotta tell you, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. You know what I mean? You, you come with some most genius stuff. Are you working on something behind the scenes? Because I know you're always, 
you know, you, you're one of those guys that's always tweaking stuff and trying to figure stuff out. And you come up with some really out of box stuff. Yeah. When, when everybody was talking about agencies, you'd be like, no, agencies don't work. Here's, here's what works. And I it's did. so true. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. All right. So IG agent is one of those things. Yeah. And it's brilliant. It, it happened, like Dan Kennedy talks about how in businesses, there's, there's accidental income. There's things that happen by accident and they produce money. And if you find a way to engineer those things instead of letting them happen by accident, you can probably scale it. And I had Instagram. I didn't know how to monetize it. I, didn't, I was an email guy. I didn't understand social media. This was a few years ago. But we'd have people DMing us. And, and I just gave it to a VA on my team or just someone who's in the office. And I said, just message them back. And, and if they want to buy something, give them a link. Right? And people would buy stuff in the DM and not like $9 stuff, like $1,000, $2,000 purchases. Just, and I'm like, well, this is happening by accident. What if I can engineer this to happen more frequently, more often every day? And uh, I spent six months working with my team and a whole, like a whole team basically to figure this out. And now we're doing multiple six figures every month just on our Instagram as a result of that. And once I figured that out, I realized, well, the people on my team who are doing this stuff, it's, like, it's not that hard. Right, like to be a closer in real life, we got to work on your confidence. Yeah. We got to work on your tonality, yeah. your energy, yeah. your state, your ability to qualify people, to build trust fast. There's so many things. So many different things. But yeah. if you're a chat closer, I could teach you the script real quick, and you could be a freaking loser who sounds like Pee Wee Herman, and the person on the other side doesn't know because it's just chat. Yes. Right. So I can teach this skill a lot faster. That's really helpful. And I would go, well, if I can teach it that fast, I can probably teach it to normal people and they can replace rat race life with laptop life. And that's what we started doing. And now, uh, like I said, in the last, so I started selling that in, uh, in May, it's November, so it's been six months. And we have over 100 people who have replaced rat race life with laptop life just as IG agents mm -hmm. in that time. It's, it's incredible. I got one kid, uh, 21 years old, he's making 50 grand a month just in a couple hours a day typing messages on his phone. It's, it's, it's amazing. And so... Once that started getting out, you and a lot of other big influencers started hitting me up and saying, yo, I hear your name every day because these freaking IG agents won't stop fucking messaging me yeah. and hitting me. They, every day they hit me up. And so a lot of influencers would start hitting me up and they say, listen, I don't know about them, right? Maybe it works for smaller accounts. I have a big account. I have a big business. Can you do it for me? And at first I was like, nope, not interested. I got this. And, and I kept getting asked. And now in the last month or so, I just as like a test, I started partnering with a couple of big influencers to see, can I clone our internal systems? Um, we had to build software. Like the amount of, of conversations we have every day are just, it's, it's unbelievable. Right. Hundreds and hundreds. And to manage that plus follow up plus who bought, who didn't, segmentation. Like we had to build a Frankenstein kind of software thing. Um, you got an infusion soft inside of Instagram. <laughs> my, my, my CTO wanted to kill himself for about three months straight. Every day, he just, I hate you. I hate you. I was like, just keep going. You can do it. You can do it. All right. But now that we built it, I was like, all right, well, let's see if we can test it out on some other influencers. So first guy we tested it out with, good friend of mine, we were talking about him off camera before, uh, $121,000 in the first 30 days that it made him. And the best part, it's found money. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, was, it, it was it was it was there. It was there the, the whole time. It was there the whole time. The whole time. You just it, picked it up. You just picked it up. You don't. He didn't like. It's not like oh, I'm doing this, so I can't promote my other products yeah. or my coaching or my emails, my ads, my store. Nothing changes. Mm -hmm. It's just an extra 120 grand in revenue we just found for him. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, so th that's like the thing I'm working on. And I just I really believe this is what I've been saying a lot is that we are in the conversation era yeah. in terms of selling and communication. 100. percent People want to be heard. They want to have a back and forth. I call it hot potato. Right? Remember when you were a kid, you throw me the potato, I throw you the yeah. potato. People want to play hot potato online. Yeah. That's, that's how sales are done, and that's how it's going to continue to get done in the future. So this skill of how to close and convert over conversation, to me, is one of the most valuable skills anyone can learn right now. Well, I agree with you 100%. Because, no, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't like getting phone calls anymore. Fuck no. I don't like getting man. phone calls. I don't, I don't you know, phone calls to me is disruptive. I don't want to pick up the phone and talk, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Send me a text, bro. Yeah. And, you know, more people are texting, more people are DMing, messaging each other. Yep. So the, the, the more you know how to close people through a message, the better you are. Yes. You have an event coming up pretty soon. Yeah, man. You know, I'm already signed up. My whole team is signed up. Hell yeah. So, so tell me about, about your event. Yeah. So it's called the High Status Summit. This is the sixth and final summit that I've done. This and the final the last one. This yeah. is the last one? This is the Why? last one. Why? <sighs> Man, uh, it's been great. The events have been amazing. Like I've met thousands and thousands of people. I just, to be perfectly honest, two reasons. One, this, this business we were just talking about, it's exploding. 
and I want to be able to give my full attention to it right yeah. now. I might come back and do other stuff later. Course. That's one thing. The other one is uh, I'm just ready for something new. You know, high, high status isn't my brand so much anymore. And it was like, well, let's, let's crush this last one and let's, let's see what, like, what kind of, we scaled that mountain. And you know, when you scale a mountain, you get to the top, there's yeah. always a bigger one in front yeah. of us. Let's, let's finish scaling this and see what's next. That's what I love about you, man. You know, you're not stuck into doing something. You know, you do it for a while, you, you monetize it, you maximize it, then you move to the next big thing. You, you evolve very fast, you adapt very fast. And I think that's very important in this day and age where it's something that you understand more than anyone else you know, the highest and the best use of your time. And if something is not the highest and the best use of your time, then you say, you know what? I have something better to do than this. Yeah. And most people, they're like, well, they're stuck in that, oh, well, I still have to do this because I started, I'm doing this. I love that. It's the, yeah, the sunk costs, right? The fallacy yeah. of, yeah. of I've, yeah. And it's like, like the stockbroker or the mm -hmm. investor who puts 10 grand in a stock and it all goes yeah. down and he goes, well, I got to put more in because it's only going to go up. It's mm -hmm. like, why would you give more money to a stock that's already going, yeah. that's down? Right, that you lost, just, just cut your losses and, and move on. Um, I love this quote. Uh, John Wooden is like one of my heroes, man. And I, I see, I like, I try and I like that I've talked to a lot of guys like 18 to 34 in that mm -hmm. demo because most of them have only been exposed to the gurus of social media. Yeah. And the fact is what Charlie Munger calls the imminent dead, right? These great men and women of history who've written these biographies from 100 or 200 or 1,000 years ago, there's so much wisdom mm -hmm. that you're not gonna find on social media. That's better, right? And John Wooden is one of those guys, and I think everyone should study John Wooden, who's the winningest basketball coach of all time at UCLA. They won uh, 10 NCAA championships, seven in a row, right? But he said, with his practices, with his team, he goes, I managed my minutes like a banker manages his money. And that, to me, is like, that is my standard for how I try. I'm not always perfect, um, but that's how I try to manage my days. Like you said, you print out your schedule. Dude, you got it. Yeah. You got it down too, and you but you know how powerful that yeah. is. So powerful, and man. And they didn't they didn't teach us. No one tells you that in school. You know, everybody right? says there's not enough time in a day. There's a lot of time in a there's day. Too much. There's, time. there's so much. Time. <laughs> if you if you really Ugh. if you really maximize every minute of your day, you know how much shit you can get done. Yep. You know, a lot of times, man. Like you know, if you you you'd be so surprised, man. I know you know. I don't, have, I don't have time. No, but there's not enough time because you fucked around all day. You didn't do shit because you were distracted. You didn't focus on one goddamn thing. But if you really, really focus, you have a plan going into the day. You crush, by noon, I've crushed everything. <laughs> everything after that is fucking bonus. Yeah, but Sam, I don't have the energy. But yeah. Sam, it's social media. But Sam, my mom, my, I, yeah, I get it, man. And and like, there's a lot of people. It's true. Like I could ask everyone who was listening right now. Like how many. How many times a week do you find yourself on your phone and you go, wait, what was I just doing? Right? This is a common thing that a lot of people have and it's the, the dopamine effect of the phone and the addiction with social media in that you're supposed to be focused but you're on scrolling and you don't know why. Right? And it's, it's really, really scary because it's robbing people of a lot of time. There's something called attention residue, which is you're supposed to be focused, you check social media for two minutes, you come back to what you're doing, 8% of your attention is now left on your screen yeah. and now you're only 92% as effective as you were before. And this compounds over the day. I remember one of my uncles, you know, he was a heavy smoker. And when he smoked, it was like, he didn't even know he was smoking. Like it automatically, he went like this, he was like sitting there, he'll finish the smoke and then went like this. And then he'll smoke another one. Like it, 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 it was like an automated reaction. Yes. Kind of like I see people do it with the phone. Yes. You ever see people on the phone? Like if, if, if you ever watch someone, the phone is right there and they're like sitting there. Yep. Yep. Like I, I'm going like, fuck, it's just like Dude, my uncle. It's there was cigarettes. It's the same kind of addiction. It's the fourth addiction. Gambling, smoking, drinking, scrolling. It's the new one. Scrolling. Scrolling. It's the fourth addiction. It, I love it. It is. I mean, most people, like, now we're not even addicted to TV. We're on our phone while we watch TV. Like, kids are watching YouTube while the TV is on. <laughs> it's, it's scary, man. Um, so it, true. It, it's, it's scary to me. And, like, I, I, like you, you've given me a lot of compliments, and my ego really appreciates it during this interview, man. But... I really believe my greatest advantage now and forever is going to be my ability to focus. Yeah. Whereas people, they, they can't. Like that's part of the reason. And I, I know, and I, I know what you're telling me. Today. I know what you're telling me is true because there's times that I text you, and you get back to me at a certain time of night, 
and I'm going like this. I'm like, this dude is focused. That's how you know. If somebody is constantly texting you right back, yeah. then they ain't focused. They're fucking, they're down on their phone all the time. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So I know when somebody's hyper focused, because I know I've, I've texted you a couple of times. I'm like, you know, like you, you like eight hours later, you know, and that's when I, you know a person is focused. And I, and I know you're not just bullshitting, you're focused. Yeah. There's, there's a set time in my calendar where I reply to all the texts. Right, like the same, like I treat text the same way I treat email now. My text, my SMS, it's just another inbox. Yeah. That's how I think about it. And with email, right, a huge mistake, as you know, most people, they freaking check their email first thing in the morning and you wake up and you spend the day reactively. Um, it, you should have a set time or days of the week where you do email and set times and days of the week where you do text. But people who are all day having these drawn out conversations back and forth, 30 messages each throughout the day, it, I don't get it. Like I, I used to have buddies who would be in these group chats and there's, you know, all the dudes are sending each other funny memes and pretty girls and shit like that. I'm like, how the fuck do you get anything done when you have these, Bro. with all your bros, you have these group chats going on? Unless you're a brain surgeon on fucking call, <laughs> then leave your phone alone. Nobody's going to die. Yep. Nobody's not, you know, that's going to happen. If there's a deal supposed to go through, it will go through tomorrow or in a few hours. Yeah. You know, but by you just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, man, you're not going to get anything done. And I always say, you know, the, the, the example that I always use is, when a car, you know, the car loses the most power when it shifts. Mm. You know, whenever you're driving a car, when you shift from first gear to second gear or second gear to third gear, that little lag, that little lag between the gears is when you lose power. Mm. And that same exact thing, when you focus, all of a sudden you go somewhere else, yes. you come back, you lose power. You lose power every single time. Yes, so true. You know what I mean? Yep, so true, man. Yeah. So, man, so what else you got going on, bro? I mean, like, I know you got, you know, you know, the status summit coming up, you, you're trying to get 100 millionaires, yeah. you know, you're living the dream, you know, you're helping so many people, you know, replace their rat race income with laptop income. What you else? Know, what, what, what do you personally have plans in your future? Marriage? Kids? Uh, I, is, is, is Jason Capital ever going to settle down? No. Not, never going to no. settle down? Well, see, I, I, I hate that language pattern, settle down. Okay. Right, what does that mean? Well, settle, settle I, down I, know, I know to most people it means you get a wife, yeah, you yeah, get yeah, kids, yeah, yeah. you put down roots, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? I just don't like the word settle. It's, I love it. Yeah, I, I love it. I think it's such a negative connotation. Um, in terms of marriage, kids, I will never get married. Uh, I have nothing against people who do. I just, it's not for me. Um, I like dogs. Uh, I, here's what I say. I like dogs more than I like people. Um, I just I, posted about that yesterday. Did you really? I did, actually. Yeah, see, I like dogs more. I love humans. Mm -hmm but I like dogs more than I like people. Yeah. So in terms of kids, at least right now, dogs, I, I think dogs is gonna be the thing. Um, I have a girlfriend, Natalie, she's amazing. We've been together for over six years now and like we are fully committed. There's just no marriage, right? She has a ring, we are together. Like it is, our, we are a team together. It's, that's my, my you, You're my married without all the paperwork and all the dra sure. drama and the bullshit. All, the, all that BS. Yeah. yeah, more power to you, man. Exactly, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm just enjoying it, man. I love Puerto Rico. So I got a place in Puerto Rico. I, do the summers in California. I got a place in Irvine over there. And it, I just want to, like, my whole thing is there's not a, there's, there's no final outcome that I'm moving towards, right? Like, there is, I love Simon Sinek has this theory about uh, finite games versus infinite games. Have you heard him talk about this before? Yes, I have. You have, right? And, and I look at business, and I think he's exactly right. He says, as an infinite game. Meaning there is no, like, people are like, I'm going to be number one in the industry. Well, by what criteria? and over what time period, and for what year. Like, like, okay, so you're number one in 2021, what about 2022? Like, the yeah. shit never ends, yeah. Yeah. right? And so once we accept that, um, I just wanna build the best businesses that I possibly can that are the most efficient businesses, the most effective in terms of profit and in terms of impact. Um, and, you know, I'm, like I said, I was listening to this Warren Buffett thing on the way here, and when, when Warren Buffett acquires you as he buys into your company, he becomes the owner or a partner with you, and you're the manager or the operator, he will tell you, you have full autonomy, but you need to run this business as if you cannot sell it or you cannot uh, liquidate it in any way for 100 years. How would you run the business then? And wow. that is a very different mindset. Most people are, I'm just racing to my exit, I'm just racing to my IPO, I'm just racing to the check and the side hustle or whatever. Well, what if you take a step back and you start making decisions for the long term instead of the short term? Um, when I was younger, I did not do this at all, and it's something I'm working on in myself, but I, like, I, I want to build businesses that, that last, you know, businesses that, that dominate an industry um, with, in a variety of ways. And it's a, it's a very different mindset that I used to have, and uh, it's, 
it, I don't know, there's something exciting about it to me. Well, I mean, you're doing it. I mean, you're doing it now. Now, the, the platform might change over time. Sure. But as far as the same basic fundamentals are going to stay the same. Yeah, they're never going to change. They're the fundamentals are the same. Yeah, like, like I have this goal I talk about publicly is that like with my IG agent in the marketing, I want to hit a million followers. Like that's kind of my goal. And that's true, right? And I'm going to hit that probably, I don't know, six months at the rate we're going right now. But what, what happens after that? Right? It's not like you hit a number. Like I used to think, this is, this is true. I, mean, I knew you when I first was younger. My goal was $1,000 a day. That's all I wanted. Because that's 365 grand a year and I can just chill. Life's good. There's nothing. Like I won't want for anything. I get the car, the penthouse, right? I added it up. I was like, that's it. Well, once I got there, it was like, well, now what? Yeah. Right? Like, well, let's go for more. Why would I stop there? Right? So it's like you hit a million. Well, what? There is no, there's no finale. It's there's true. no outcome. It's, to it's, it's so true. When I think about it, you know, for me, it was like, you know, get up, get, you know, I wanted to bench 225. That was, that was, that was a set goal, right? Yep. And that was, you know, I did 135. I remember the day I did 185. I remember they did a two, 205. And I said, well, I do 225, two plates. And he said, I want to be the fucking man. <laughs> and I did two plates. I'm like, well, oh, no, I'm not done. Yep. And I want to keep going. I want to keep going. I want to yep. keep going. Same thing when I said, when I told myself I want to be a millionaire. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw seven figures on my bank account. I literally was like, one, <laughs> two, three, four. I actually went to the bank. I said, I want said, I said, I to take this million dollars out. They're like, well, we can't give you a million. I'm like, I'm like you have my money. They're like, no, we can't give you a million dollars. We don't care that much cash. I'm like, they made me go back 10 times to get $100,000 transactions. And I remember I just put it all in a, in a Louis bag, you know, because I wanted to see how that shit felt. Like, I have a picture. Bro, I have a picture. I will show it to you. Oh, I put it all in a Louis bag, man, you know, just to see what a million dollars looked like, right? And I was like, this ain't even as big as I thought it was. Right? I thought a million dollars would be a, like, a, like a, a room full of shit. But it was like, you can fill in the fucking duffel bag. That's crazy. You know what I mean? That's and crazy. that's when I was like, man, no, I don't want to be a millionaire. I want to be a you know, deca millionaire. And now yes. I want to be a central millionaire, you know? Yes. You know, and, 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 and when I become a central millionaire, then we're like, wow, I want to be a billionaire. You know, it always, there's always a next level. And I love the fact that, you know, settling means that you're going to stop. Yes. You know what I mean? So there's, there's, the, the game is infinite. It's infinity, right? That's like my shirt always says, keep fucking going. Keep fucking going. I wear it every day as a reminder for myself and for my audience. Like, just, we just, like, there's no end to this. Everyone's got, like, they, they create these rules in their head. When I make this money and I have this girl and this car, then I'll be happy. Then I'll be successful. It, there is no rule. You just keep going. You just said Kaizen, right? Kaizen yes. is constant, never in the improvement. Yes. So if you believe in that, then you can say it's a finite game. Yes. Finite That's game, right? It's just, let's just keep evolving and keep getting better. Let's see. Like, I don't expect to ever tap into my full potential because I don't know that it's possible. But let's see how close we can get. Yeah. You know, that's it. Yeah. Well, Jason, for those people who, that don't know you for some reason, that they should, where they can they find more about you? Your, your, you know, your Instagram, your website? Yeah, just, just follow me on, on Instagram, at Jason Capital. Send me a DM. I usually reply, or me or someone on my team will reply. And we like, like I said, conversations. That's what we do. All right, man. We got to have you back on the show, man. Thanks so much Dude. for coming through. Thank you so much, yeah. man. This was great.